Welcome once again to Cinemaholics, where we talk about the biggest and best films coming to theaters and streaming online from the San Francisco Bay Area. I'm John Agroni, film editor for The Young Folks, and from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, he's a pop culture writer for Cinema Blend. It's Will Ashen. Hey. You can find more episodes of Cinemaholics, including our full archive on cinemaholics.com, including our written reviews and other bonus content, even some merch. You can write into the show anytime by sending us an email, cinemaholicspodcast at gmail.com. You can also find that email in the show notes. Hit us up if you have a question, comment, or especially concern, because obviously we, we always have concerns about everything. Yeah, I'm and fairly concerned right now. I know, yeah. <laughs> I, I can't stop being concerned about yeah. the fact. I, well, uh, first, I want to say we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash cinemaholics. My concern is we were, we were supposed to talk about Clifford today, Will Ashton. I binged yeah. Clifford, me the too. big red dog, Yeah. for you. And for me, yeah. You you texted me throughout the night and like we're, we're talking about Clifford right we're talking about you saw Clifford yeah. <laughs> I like, well what? I had a bad feeling um, I don't know if we should reveal this or not but <clears throat> we were supposed to have my co-host from A Ogre to Ogre Matt and Chris on the show to talk about it then we're gonna do like a little another uh, reunion episode but I just had this weird feeling throughout the weekend like something isn't gonna work out and I was I thought it was because they were gonna forget that we were recording today but what turned out to be is that they thought we were doing uh, an episode of Any Ogre to its Ogre when we were actually going to be talking about Clifford the Big Red Dog. So, uh, suffice to say, it didn't quite go according to plan. And we had to we had to think of something else to do very quick and Belfast. That's right, because we're talking about yep. Belfast instead today. We're going to talk right. about Clifford later in the week, along with a couple other movies we want to catch up on. Hoping he gets other things like Red Notice, Finch. We have The Harder They Fall, which was already recorded. That's going to yeah. be coming out tomorrow. I mean, Good so many movies. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I just got back from Disneyland, though. So I'm, I've been on vacation and I have not been working as hard. But I'm back, Will. And I'm, I'm ready to talk to you about all kinds of things. Yeah, I'm excited. Sorry, I was First, taking a sip of water while you were talking. I didn't realize you were going to come back to me. So sorry about that. <laughs> just goes around and around. Yeah, uh, look, Belfast... It, it, you know what? Maybe it's fitting we give Belfast its own to do because this is a movie that I think a lot of people are going to be very curious about over the coming months. So let's just get right into it. We all have a story to tell. But what makes each one different is not how the story ends, but rather the place where it begins. Holy God. Mama says if we went across the water, they wouldn't understand the way we talk. If they can't understand you, then they're not listening. You know who you are, don't you? Your buddy from Belfast, where everybody knows you. Hey, buddy! Your mom's calling you yes. We're looking to cleanse the community a wee bit. You wouldn't want to be the old man out in the street. Touch my family and I'll kill you. To leave Belfast. We'll fight this together. This is it. This is what? This is war. Belfast is the latest film from director Kenneth Branagh. I think, uh, let's see, last movie he did was Artemis Fowl. I mean, that's the last movie that came out. I don't know if it's the last one he worked on because that movie got delayed like 12 years or whatever it was. But... Yeah. What's up with that? Because like, he has Death the Nile coming out too. And literally in this time that's that it's taken for that movie to be finished and come out he made belfast like he wrote it he filmed it he edited it and now it's in theaters released and still he, don't he have made it pretty now. belfast he made it pretty belfast what can you, mm. what can you do about there you that, go right? yeah, yeah yeah but yeah. yeah his uh his last two films at least before this one have been uh fair to say tormented i guess as far as their release <laughs> and then filmmaking i guess he directed uh, all this true, but I I didn't see that. That was his last sort of okay. I'm gonna do another Shakespeare thing. Oh yeah, because he was, that's hey, that's how we got to start. He was literally Shakespeare in that one, right? Oh, uh, I didn't I didn't see all. Did you see all this true? No, I didn't. But I thought I thought I heard he yeah, plays he, he, Shakespeare. Yeah, he plays he plays Shakespeare. Yeah, I think like a, a later so, in life, and I think uh, yeah, Dame just, Judi Dench is also in that one, right? Yeah, which I mean, that sounds like the most Kenneth Branagh movie ever. <laughs> right, right. Shakespeare's yeah. involved, and Judi Dench is in it. Yeah. But the movies you're referring to, yeah, like you said, Artemis Fowl, Murder on the Orient Express. People like Cinderella, the live action, the the Disney live action remake yeah. he did before. Good one. Uh, yeah, and I like hey, it. 
I, I don't love Cinderella as much, but yeah, it's not a bad movie. I don't love it. Right? It's good. Yeah. It's good. It's like by Disney remake standards, I think it's good. Yeah, yeah, it does, it, it does a few things that are fun. And yeah, I think I think a lot of people are like, Kenneth Branagh, ah, I think I've heard that name. We're talking about the Marvel fans, right? Because he did the first Thor movie. He never came back to Marvel. And I think the feeling was probably mutual. It was like, all right, you know, I, I don't well, think they were on like bad terms, right? They were just sort of like, you did it. You did a movie for us. We'll see you. I guess. I mean, I just kind of got the sense. That I don't, I've never read anything about his involvement with the film or anything like that, but I kind of got the sense they're like, at the time, you know, Marvel wasn't Marvel. So Thor was kind of like a goofy Nordic God premise. And they were just like, we kind of need yeah, to they, sell yeah. this in a way that like people take it somewhat seriously if we're building like a universe out of this. So, so it's they like, got the Shakespeare we... guy. Yeah, they, they got the Shakespeare They didn't know guy. what to do with it. So they were right. like, all right, well, he, he was able to make Shakespeare interesting to the kids. Right. And I like that movie. I, I think it's better than people give it credit. But it's definitely an early phase one fish out of water kind of comedy slash action blockbuster thing it's it, it is of its time i guess for the mcu but i don't know i like it certainly more than thor the dark world um but uh, that's neither here nor there if you look at his whole filmography you see a lot of personality right brian he, he's not he, i mean people don't think of him as immediately right when you're like he, okay give me some auteur directors but he right. had he does have some signature styles you know yeah. yeah the dutch angel dutch angel you know no dutch, dutch angle yeah. yeah yeah that's a big thing with him and I think with Belfast, though, this this is very different from his filmography, unless he's made something in this vein that I've just never seen. He, he's made plenty of other films. I, I don't know if I've ever really like a, a black and white film in the 1960s about a young boy who comes of age. It's got a lot of heart, a lot of comedy, a lot of drama that I wouldn't think like, OK, that's that's Kenneth Branagh, you know, at the helm. Right. But that's the movie we got. This thing premiered to tell you right it's on the fast track to being the big best picture winner. People think this thing isn't just going to get nominated, it's going to win. And that's based on data that suggests that based on how well it's done so far, winning the People's Choice Award at TIFF and just the, the reaction from critics, people are saying, yeah, this is the one to beat. If, if it loses, that's going to be a surprise to a lot of people for the next best picture. That said, I'm a, I'm a little surprised because I watched this movie – Will you saw it recently as well? And I thought it was I thought it was pretty lovely. I had a nice time watching it. I, I'm happy to talk about it and dig into the things that I like. Some of the things I think are interesting and less interesting. But this movie does not scream like best movie of the year to me. I mean, few best picture winners do, I guess. But I don't know. I I'd like to think that we kind of got past this whole feel good kind of Oscar Beatty sort of thing a few years ago. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I had read in Entertainment Weekly that I guess this is a project that he's wanted to make for a long time. Like, I think he said something like 50 years at this point. Uh, just a movie reflecting back on his childhood, thinking back on his influences, seeing like how he can like look at that period of time from a more uh, reflective but also wistful perspective. And I guess it was just something he kind of just kept putting off for a long time. But then during the lockdown, he was like, oh, okay, I will guess I'll just finally write this because I have all this time I didn't expect to have. And that's how it came together. And I heard all this. And I'm like, oh, okay, this sounds like, you know, something that's like going to be very heartfelt from Kenneth Branagh, like something that, you know, for all of its faults, like clearly came from a place of love and sincerity. And I'm not saying that's not the case, but what I found so weird about the film is that it feels oddly sort of impersonal. Like, I mean, I get like it gets from his own, background presumably like his own family history and all that but there is a sort of detachment in the way that it's filmed like it's meant to be more observant as opposed to uh subjective that i just found that to be a fairly odd choice i'm guessing he's trying to mimic something like roma from alfonso Cuarón a couple years ago it has a similar style it also was shot in black and white and it you know took place from his uh his own childhood that was like a somewhat autobiographical film for him as well and uh i just I, I don't think, like you say, it's never a bad film. Like, I thought throughout, like, yeah, this is fine. This is fine. This is fine. This is fine. And it's like, yeah, it's like, I kept waiting for that oomph where it's like, okay, like, now, like, this is it. Like, this is why people are saying this is, like, the best picture winner or the potential best picture winner for the year. And I just felt like it never quite got there. I mean, there's stuff in here I liked a lot. Like, um, Syrian Hines, I think, gives a fantastic performance. I think he's probably going to get a Best Supporting Actor nomination, if not yeah, the win. Most likely. He could win. Um, I think Judy Dench is also quite good. Um, 
Jamie Dornan is good. I forget I like the name. The adults. The adults in yeah. this movie are very solid. Really and good think, performances. Jamie Dornan sings. What else do you yeah. want? I and sings I again because right. he sung last year too. Oh, yeah. Uh, Arben Star. Oh, that was this year. But um, oh, yeah, yeah, it I feels just, like last yeah. year. But um, yeah, because that was back in February. Uh, but yeah, also, I think the little kid is also pretty good in this. I'm trying to look up his name now. Jude Hill. Yeah. Newcomer Jude Hill. He, he's a little precocious kid. I, I think mm-hmm. some some of the time I'm like, I buy the acting. Other times I'm like, oh, they might they might have wanted to do like one more take. He's close. Like he almost nailed that. Hmm. But uh, yeah, no, I, I didn't really take much issue with his performance. But for me, it just like it seemed like a movie on paper. It should be an absolute winner. And like we said, it's not even the bad film. It just sort of feels like it's missing something. And I can't quite figure out what that missing ingredient is. But it's preventing me from feeling like this is like the movie uh, people are making it out to be right now. I just kind of feel it's it's uh, it's fine. Like it's it's you know, it's all right. It's OK. But yeah. I mean, I, I can I can give you my own. I mean, uh, we got to set this thing up a little bit in case people don't know really what's the what's the set of this thing. Right. So the movie takes place in 1969, I believe it is. <clears throat> but it's going like into the 70s, I think, like into 1970. So it's like over the course of like several months or something like that. We follow this young boy, as we mentioned, his name is Buddy, played by Jude Hill. And yeah, he, he's a he's a fun loving kid. We meet him. He knows all the neighbors, you know, his mom played by Katrina Balfe is trying to wrangle him back inside. The movie kind of opens with, you know, the modern days. It's like colorful, you know, it's shot in color. But then as we go back in time, it goes to black and white. Hence the Roma connection, as you mentioned. And this kid has like a very idyllic life at first, but then something like these riots start happening, the Belfast riots of that year. And it's a very harrowing sequence. And I think at that moment, I was like, oh, gosh, like this movie's really going to go for it, isn't it? Like they're going to they're going to put this kid through the ringer. And they sort of do. I mean, one, one thing that I like about this movie is we follow this kid through a fairly well-rounded childhood. I thought it was kind of realistic the way his childhood, like there are certain obsessions of certain seasons, right? Like there's a lot going on in his life. It's not just about the riots. It's not just about the crush he has on the girl at school. It's not just about the relationship with his grandparents and the fact that his parents need money. When you're a kid, there are a lot of things going on, right? Because that's how it is when you're an adult, but we see it through his perspective. And I did pick up on that same thing you mentioned, though, where sometimes it feels like it's a little bit observed. Like sometimes all these elements of the kid's life don't quite connect to each other within the story. Like there's this whole element of how he loves the movies. And when he watches a movie or watches a play, then everything like shoots to color. And it's supposed to be it's a nice little gimmick, right? It kind of gets the point across. But there were times I thought where, and I think I heard Kenneth Branagh say this in an interview where he didn't just use stuff from his childhood, he uses a lot, but he used things from other people's childhoods as well to try to give like this composite fictional character. And it almost sort of loses a bit of specificity because I just didn't get this kid by the end of it. There there were some contradictory, I mean, maybe purposely so, contradictory elements of this kid's personality and what he's going through. And by the time it ended, I didn't really fully grasp what the point of the movie suddenly becomes, hey, you know, this this is a movie about Belfast itself and the people there. And, you know, it's okay to leave. It's okay to stay. And we have to respect, you know, the people that we lost. And I thought that was really nice and touching. But I think what separates this from a movie like Roma, as you mentioned, is that Roma has that oomph it has that craft behind it i mean it has moments in the film full of that joy and warmth but then when the serious stuff happens it isn't glossy and it isn't i don't want to i hate to say this but it doesn't feel like a tv movie drama version of it it actually like really fully commits to the tension and the turmoil and i think that's where belfast kind of let me down a little bit but like you said not in a way that I'm like, oh man, people are going to hate this. I think people, one of the reasons it's taking off the way it is is because people, it makes people feel good while watching it. How could it not? It makes you want to fall in love. Right. I mean, it's not like it's a matter of like, I don't see what people see in the movie. I just don't really get the like enthusiastic responses I've seen from some people from it. Like, oh boy, like this is a, a tour de force from Kenneth Branagh. He's finally coming into his own as a filmmaker and all that. I don't know if anyone's going quite that far with it, but it's just, yeah, I mean, it it feels more like a stew than like a, like specific film. Like it's trying to do all these different things. As you mentioned, it's trying to pick from different 
periods and times, I guess it's to make it feel more well-rounded, but like you mentioned, it seems to kind of backfire against the film. It seems like it gives the film less of a sense of point of view or something that makes it feel more singular and unique and raw to Kenneth Branagh. It makes it feel almost more cliched, almost more like it's like kind of trying to do an impression of coming of age movies from this time period and this place and all that. And I don't know, it just feels like it could have been something more. It, it, it doesn't have that, that um that that secret ingredient to make it unique to itself and really kind of come into its own unfortunately and ironically uh yeah. yeah i would say i think this is one of those cases it happens a lot and there's not much we can do about it and there's not much to complain about but i think it comes down to the fact that there's an easy narrative behind this movie there's a way for kenneth Branagh to package and sell it as an awards contender because it makes people feel good while they're watching it as we mentioned it it has enough craft like it's good enough that people can kind of get behind it and be like oh the, from this veteran filmmaker who's been making movies since henry v he you know this is his movie this is his tour de force it's quote his most personal film and that's where the narrative kicks in the critics respond and then it just becomes a cycle it becomes a cyclical people go then and watch it and yeah some people like us are being like yeah you know it was nice not my favorite but then other people it's like a permission structure like oh i can feel enthusiastic about this and i'm not going to get backlash you know what i mean people are going to be like oh yeah you know and i did like this maybe this is the best movie of the year even if you know they don't quite have the experience i think they were sold on Right. Yeah. I mean, there's always something cynical about the award season experience because it kind of cheapens whatever a movie's trying to do to make it seem like it's becoming like this almost political product for a, you know, studio or whatever you want to have it. Um, but yeah, with this movie, yeah, just like I just don't because of all the things we talked about, it just feels weird that people are like rallying behind it with firm emotions. Like, I mean, I could maybe see that being the case for Kenneth Branagh since it's his film and all that. But I just yeah, I mean, it just doesn't have enough. to make itself unique to really i feel like warrant so much uh passion from select audiences it just kind of it just feels a bit listless it feels like it's not quite uh true to itself or true to any one pers particular perspective and therefore it loses some of that individuality and therefore it doesn't feel universal ironically yeah it's, it, it, we could do a whole of where this movie kind of makes some weird mistakes i think one of the big things is with the parents relationship i love these performances i think jamie dornan and katrina balf are so good and they they sell I, I think a script that is a bit all over the place with them I, I, honestly like i i don't I, I can't figure out if it was on purpose but we have one scene where they're behaving a certain way and then they come back and then they do something and i just feel like i'm looking at a totally different person i guess and right there, there are character choices that happen off screen that are really important and, and i think that again i think it's something where he's like well yeah because it's from buddy's perspective but it's not always from his perspective right. there are times when it's just the adults so i don't know it's like that kind of sloppiness that does kind of stick out and it does kind of make you feel like the movie doesn't have that really like firm grasp on what it wants to say and how yeah exactly yeah because it feels like it's almost trying to do two things at once and therefore the decisions it makes kind of contradict themselves like it, yeah like you said like it it doesn't really define itself enough to do like the kind of like true font like you know 400 blows sort of coming of age black and white art drama but at the same time by trying to be more observant and like more reflective it doesn't quite earn those moments with the parents or with the adults because it's kind of going two places at the same time it doesn't it doesn't feel like it's true to itself or really defined in any particular meaningful way I'm really glad you mentioned 400 blows because, I mean, yeah, that that is, of course, the prototype for the the coming of age black and white drama set in a European country. And I think I think it highlights a disparity between the two, the boy in Belfast and the boy in 400 blows. The boy in 400 blows is very troubled. He's a tragic character, but you also really root for him. You kind of get him, even though he's an inexperienced kid and he acts like a kid in Belfast. It, it doesn't earn that emotional investment in the young boy, I, I think as much because you just kind of start the movie with like, everybody's obsessed with this kid. He's the center of everybody's attention. And that would work if the movie was sort of about how he perceives life that way, but they don't. Instead, it, whenever we cut to other perspectives, they're like, we got to look out for this kid. This kid is the most important thing to happen to Belfast in a generation. <laughs> it's like a little bit, you know, it's not subtle. And I think that it, it speaks a little bit to the Kenneth Branagh, kind of how he views himself in this situation. And he has kind an of, ego. I, I don't know, it was odd. 
Yeah, yeah. he has an ego. <laughs> I mean, there's no like I I I, I like the guy, but I mean, I, I think anyone would say he has an ego, and that's uh, like that infuses into the film. It's safe to say. Yeah, he's like telling a story around the fire, and it's like, yeah, there were, I was this amazing kid, and everybody doted on me, and, yeah, there and was, all these hijinks I got up to. Once upon a time, there was this kid. He was like a really just cool, awesome kid, an ordinary kid, of course, but like secretly like dope and cool and awesome and like everyone loves him <laughs> went to and, the movies and right. then made movies one day yeah, yeah. just <laughs> yeah, your average I, kid of course uh i think what's important about movies that take place in a location when when you have a movie that's about a location this movie's about belfast it's a love letter to belfast you do sort of have to get across the idea that this world continues to exist and move around and do things without this kid like it, it, it he's so anchored to the location i think overly so that yeah it, it makes me feel like the the kid is overshadowing the story about belfast it, it's a hard it's a hard thing to balance i i don't envy Branagh's like mission with his movie it was a hard thing to pull off and i don't think he pulled it off as well but i think the movie is of course saved by all of its charm and all all the niceties around it because yeah i, I can't imagine people watching this and being like oh that was super boring i mean maybe some people might find it a little dull Bit because dull. they don't connect with it but yeah i don't know it's funny i like times yeah i mean but it's not like uproarious it's just kind of more just like sensible chuckle Kind of just like, oh, hoo, hoo, hoo. yes, indeed. <laughs> uh, ha, ha, ha. Yeah, and it, I think, yeah, the movie does kind of like go more for the lightness instead of the more, the, the harder stuff to process, right? Because there's a lot of stuff in this movie about religion, about the the Catholic, the Irish Catholics, the Irish Protestants, the, the, the strife between them. It's the thing that kind of drives the family to wondering if they need to leave Belfast, right? And yeah, that's really fascinating stuff. But again, if we, I hate to bring up Roma once again, but there was also a movie where that was happening in the backdrop. It didn't take over the story, but there was enough there and there was enough said and spoken where it made you think, right? Like it made you think about the, the struggles of this place and time in a way beyond itself. In Belfast, I always felt like this was a fleeting thing. This was something I was like, oh, you know, it's going to work itself out, especially because the movie opens with Belfast in the modern day. And it kind of shatters its own illusion of the fate and destiny of this place by sort of saying like, hey, you know, everything's going to be fine. Like starting your movie with like everyone's going to live in the end it does kind of get or it kind of robs some of that tension away almost it just seems so odd to me that what's supposed to be his most personal film is somehow like one of his most derivative in that respect it just yeah it's just it's kind of an odd film in that way but like not in like a spectacular way like how did this happen just kind of more just like that's weird it's weird that it's just not like more brana like it feels like this it's an odd choice for like this film the one that's a little bit more reserved in its creative choices and more like uh subdued in what it's trying to do and say it just feels like if if there's any film where he really need to like uh embellish and and make like you know bold creative choices this would have been the one to do it and i guess maybe you could argue that like the fact that it is in black and white and you know period pieces are bold decisions but like you said like we've got a few films like this already it's i think it kind of to be expected almost but yeah i don't know i, I wish i had like something more uh grand to say about the film but it's kind of find myself shrugging my shoulders and being like yeah it's it was a movie it's nice and all like you said <laughs> but it's a film I mean, we already mentioned it, but I think Sarah Hines and, and Judy Dench, I, I think for me, elevate this thing quite a bit. Yeah. There are enough scenes with them, with this kid, where they're just sitting and talking and kind of bouncing off of him that are so sweet and touching. Mm -hmm. And like, yeah, yeah I think I think there are moments, enough moments like that, where th those are the things when I look back on the movie after all this time, I remember them in much more detail. Mm -hmm. I don't remember a lot of other stuff. I mean, the older brother, what did I almost wonder like what the point of his character was? Oh, I there wasn't about really. Him. Yeah, I know. Just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> poor kid. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nobody cares about him. Yeah, there, there's like a neighborhood girl. I guess she's like the cousin. I, I want to say Something but like that. Yeah, it was a little confusing, but <laughs> I, her character made no sense to me whatsoever. <laughs> Every time she showed up, I was like, okay, which version of this character are we gonna get? Yeah. Because there's the version of her where she's in a gang, and then there's the version of her where like she's their best friend and I, I didn't understand her i don't know yeah i just uh yeah i just I, I don't know it's a weird film like that 
<laughs> All right. Well, I, hey, did, at least the the fact that it's black and white did that. Did, do you think that was a good choice? Do you th- what do you think this would have uh, been like if it had been in color? Do you think it would, no, anyone would have even cared? I mean, uh, I think I was talking about this before off the air that like I I love black and white films. I think we've gotten quite a few recently that look gorgeous in black and white. For instance, uh, Cold War and uh, The Lighthouse and and I, I mean, you know Roma too, as we mentioned, but. This one, like, I mean, it's shot on film, but I didn't even really notice that because it has kind of a, a murkiness to it. And I guess you disagree with that. There are some shots in this I think are quite striking. For instance, I think the way that um, the scene where he's singing is shot, it looks quite picturesque. And like those moments really stand out. But otherwise, I feel like the, the choice to shoot this in black and white uh, wasn't quite as cinematic as I was hoping it would be. It didn't, it didn't quite have that flourish or that that uh quality to it that then would make it really stand out more i think it just it, it left oddly something to be desired uh yeah I, I don't think i'm as negative on it as you i think in general the everlasting love scene of course i mean that's that's probably my favorite scene of the whole movie where all of a sudden they kind of brown egg was like okay i spent this whole time trying to well, be alfonso Cuaron. yeah <laughs> now now i'm gonna try to be you know john carney <laughs> and, right. hey you know what i i'm always fine with a little a little little a little dose a little dash of carney in my movie I, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll accept it especially because you know i love irish films right i mean sure. sometimes i watch an irish film and everybody's like john this movie's garbage and i'm like no it's not I love it. <laughs> They're like, no, John, you don't understand. The movie yeah. has a zero percent on Rotten Tomatoes. It's my favorite. Mm. <laughs> I just, I love Ireland. I love, I, I love stories about Ireland. I think it's such a unique place. I think it, the people there are so interesting to me, and I think their stories and their struggles and their their lows, their highs, their loves. It tends to be very cinematic, yeah, it, by my character. estimation. Say again. A lot of character. In that, that yeah a lot place. of character yeah. yeah it's funny because like they have a lot of character they have a lot of personality but they also are they get like a reputation right for being very reserved they kind of keep things down and yeah. i don't think that's the whole story to i mean obviously you can't generalize an entire group of people well but... many people have though <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah. exactly but uh, i yeah i just think I, there's something there's something very alluring to me about stories that they tell about their place that i think is very fascinating, very uniquely fascinating for the yeah. United Kingdom or, you know, the whole general European Union, I should say. Right. Like there's something kind of like rugged and down to earth about, but there is a sort of like mystique. Like there's like this sense that like Ireland is kind of like bigger than them, but it's also this kind of small, quaint little place at the same time. It's, it's a, uh, yeah, it's a lovely little place. I would yeah. love to visit someday, but um, it's yeah. a beautiful place to shoot movies, you know, sure. <laughs> it really is. Yeah. But. Yeah, maybe um, maybe for the first ever Cinemaholics field trip. Yeah. <laughs> we'll head on over to Ireland. I don't know. There you go. Yeah. Um I mean just just because I've been a little negative on it. Um I the 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 scenes I guess outside of what we talked about with Sharon Hines and Judy Dench that really stood out to me were the film scenes. Like I, I don't know if it was just because we were seeing other movies and that kinda of perked my interest a bit, but um I just, I think the way that he shoots those scenes are very interesting. I I, I think the Chi Chi Bang Bang scene in particular is just like it's is that like the most animated audience ever see Chi Chi Bang oh, Bang? I love it. <laughs> I, uh, I was like, yes, go full because the, it was moments like that where I wish the rest of the movie was like that in terms of like that would be how that kid remembers it, right? It's probably like a fictionalized memory, right? And it was the only time where I felt that was coming through, but right, <laughs> I, but no, I think but the, is playing it straight. <laughs> I don't know because it's like. It almost has like this weird roller coaster quality to it. Like it feels like the audience is like literally like moving in their seats as it's happening, and it just it stands out to me because it's it feels like he's making more choices there that feel personal to him. And it's just like I kind of wish the movie was on that wavelength more because it feels like he's afraid to do that for the rest of the film, oftentimes. And uh, yeah, I don't know. It just it just it just makes for I think those scenes make for a more interesting, unique film that that weirdly Brana seems to shy away from. I definitely agree. I think, um, yeah, if any of you check out Belfast, you know, we already mentioned it. Yeah, it is pretty derivative. Another recent movie that I recommend, I've recommended it on the show many times, but if you're coming to us and you've never listened to the show, like beyond a few episodes, I think Minari. Uh, oh, sorry. Minari? I'm talking a more recent. I was going to mention Minari. Yeah. 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 You're good at predicting things. Um, I was going to say, I think Minari is a vastly superior version of this movie. And it is kind of hard to be like to watch a movie like Minari 
only like I, I've seen it a few times now, but seeing it like a year ago and then watching this and yeah, it just, you know, I hate to, I hate to be so negative, but I, I do think that in terms of like the, both movies are very similar with like this family coming of age yeah. thing. Both the worst I think Menard, too. both awards films, I think Minari struck that balance almost perfectly with, yeah, the kid's kind of the center of attention because he's kind of the youngest and kids, people look out for him, but I never felt like he was the only character in the story who mattered. You know what I mean? I yeah. always felt like, I felt like every member of that family was accounted for. And mm -hmm. uh, with maybe the exception, I think that also dealt with like the older sister, not, you know, being as like important to the story. But I think Menard was way better about that than like, I remember that kid's name at least. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Whereas right. with them, I, you please do not quiz me on the name of any character in Belfast. Sure. And I saw that movie less than two weeks ago. Right. Well, I just, I mean, I thought a lot about Sing Street as well. Cause I was also, Oh know, yes. Another Very film. easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Another personal film uh, like this where, you know, has like the brother, has like the family dynamic, but also has a character using art to kind of escape the refined uh, quality of his life or like the restrictions, I mean, of his life in a way that, that I felt was a little bit more rich and felt a little bit more personal, a little bit more accessible at the same time. And yeah, it just feels like this movie's like kind of like trying to take those similar qualities and almost like calculate it into a film. And it's just weird. I don't know. Yeah. Well, what about Jojo Rabbit? All right, I guess that's a yeah. cue for us to move on. <laughs> I mean, it, it did cross my mind a couple of times, but I didn't feel like that was like a personal film for uh, Taika <laughs> yeah, That would be Waititi. weird to Taika Waititi. Right. Like, well, so you, a lot of you don't know this about me, but <laughs> I, the, the reason I brought up Jojo Rabbit was because I, the, the little boy kind of, it was a very similar, I think, performance in terms of like this precocious kid who kind of sure. gets in over his head. And yeah. they have very similar acting chops, I guess. Yeah, but it felt like Bronner was like trying to prevent him from kind of doing the the cutesy thing that that happens in uh, Jojo Rabbit. Either you think so? Well, I just felt like the movie wasn't really trying to be like winking in the same way. Like it's trying to be more like grounded and true to life in terms of the acting choices for most of it. But then, like you said, like we have like the scene, like the Che Che Bang Bang scene, or you know the everlasting love scene, and that seems to contradict the tone of the rest of the film. I would say for the better, but at the same time, narratively, it, it doesn't quite add up. So, I don't know. Yeah, all right, fair enough, fair enough. Let's well, Rotten Tomatoes this thing, Lash. And I, I have you seen the Rotten Tomatoes score for Belfast? I mean, it, it's changed uh, quite a bit because yeah. the movie hit the movie hit a bigger release. More critics have seen it. More critics have reviewed it. So, what do you think it is? I think at one point I saw like a while back I saw it, and it was like in a ninety percent range i'm gonna guess it went down a little bit because like you know like there's the buzz around it and i i talked to other people and they're kind of like yeah like it was fine like it was okay um so i'm gonna say 84 percent uh, a little higher than that but not too far okay. off 88 percent out of 168 reviews but you're right it did go down a little bit and i think yeah you're that's that expected oh this is the best picture winner and you know i think i think in general a lot of people are probably watching this and the average rating has probably gone down way more than the RT score, right? Because I think a lot of critics are still going to rate it fresh, even if they don't think this thing is amazing. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. I mean, cause like, I don't know, like I'm not, I don't know if I'm fresh or negative on the film, but I'm not like pessimistic on him. Like, yeah, I'm definitely you know, fresh. Like, worth yeah, I, don't know. I, I go back and forth. I'm fresh to negative on it, but I can see why people are fresh on it for sure. All right. Well, we don't want to get too fresh with each other yeah, before we even get to the audience score. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> what, what do you think that is? 250 plus verified ratings for the audience score so far. So, you know, decent number. Um, I, I imagine it's high, but my heart says low. So I'm going to say 76%. Mm, you should have, you should have gone with, uh, I think you said your mind is 90%. 90. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah people are liking it. I mean, I don't know. I, again, I, I think I think this movie just makes people feel good. And hey, look, when, when you come out of a movie and you're feeling good, that's great. Yeah, <laughs> so, it's not offensive it, or anything. Like it doesn't like. Yeah, I guess maybe if you're Catholic. It's e oh yeah, yeah. Oh, we're Protestant. <laughs> I, I feel like you could look at this movie and you could just be you could find all kinds of things to pit to nitpicks and you can do all all that criticism stuff and analysis. But I think a lot of people are just going to watch it and they're going to be like, yeah, all right, sure. It's not. I don't think it's the best picture, but you know, it's a it's a good picture. Why not? And yeah, oh, fair I enough for that. I did forget to mention that the the church scene like early on was also pretty good, where it's like the the priest like yelling at everybody like that was. That felt a little bit more distinct to me than the rest of the film. 
Yeah, I, was, I remember trying to find the the name of the actor because I think I recognized him, but I couldn't quite, uh, you know, place the name. I, I, I think I've seen him in uh, probably Killing Eve or something. But yeah, I was like, man, more than that guy, please. Uh, okay, Cinema Score. What do you think the Cinema Score for Belfast is based on everything we've talked about so far? Uh, B plus? Mm, close, A minus. Oh, wow. All right. no, yeah, yeah, people are liking it. The <laughs> Yeah, people are liking it. Some critics hate it. I mean, I think one of the lowest scores I saw from one from a a well known critic, I think David Ehrlich of IndieWire, was really low on the film. Right? I think he gave it like really? a C. Uh, that's not that low. That's kind of uh, low for for a movie that might win Best Picture. Probably will. That's pretty low for one. Do you of think the, it's gonna win for sure? Not for sure. I think yeah. for me, I I might. I'm currently rooting for King Richard. Not that I think it's the best movie of the year, but if there was gonna be a Best Picture winner. I think that movie has the the sauce to make it yeah. happen, and I really like uh, King Richard yeah. a lot more than this movie. Yeah, I'll probably see that this week. That comes out this weekend, right? Uh, I think so. Yeah. And yeah. I, hey, look, Spencer, I I would love for Spencer to win, even though I think sure. it, you know it doesn't have the best shot ever. Uh, yeah, but Spencer seems kind of more divisive, uh, just because it makes sure. Kind of, I, I like it more certainly, but um, yeah, I guess, I don't know if I'll take the best picture prize. I don't know the one that that I think might be the sneaky horse. You say the licorice situation. pizza? Yeah, I think it might. I don't know. I'm just. I'll let you know. I've seen it Wednesday. It I seems like wait. people are really liking it, and I'm, I, you know, it makes sense. I love Paul Thomas Anderson; he's my favorite director. But um, I love yeah, the I idea know. of this being the movie that you know gets in the Oscar, you know, because *Phantom right. Thread* was so yeah. great, and it didn't get as much love as I was hoping it would. And yeah, it, it would be a long time coming, sure. Right? Yeah, and that seems like a pretty personal, warm film that people are really responding to. I don't know. I just, you know, it's an open race at this point. I I just have to feel like. You know, uh, more people are going to be a little bit more negative on Belfast, but I, I, I don't know if that's going to um, impact the Academy if they're already in its graces or whatever. But we'll see. We'll see. We will. We will. Okay. If you want to check out Belfast, it is now available to watch in theaters and limited release right now. It is only 97 minutes long. We'll be back later this week. To talk about so many other movies, you're you're, you're going to be spoiled rotten. You're going to be like, whoa, this is too many movies. I had enough. <laughs> <laughs> but one, one thing we didn't get to, I don't know if we're going to get to Tick, Tick, Boom until probably till it comes out on Netflix, which is going right. to be coming out on Netflix this weekend. So mm -hmm. we will talk about Tick, Tick, Boom as well. Uh, there are a few other things we'd like to get to, but we don't know if it's going to happen. I, I still want to see Come On, Come On and, and Julia yep. and these movies. But again, oh, yeah. I was on vacation, so I missed them. I, I don't know if I'm going to have a chance, but I am. Really good thing is about come on, come on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mike Mills. Yeah, good always director. always happy to see something from him. Yeah, yeah. Clifford yeah. the Big Red Dog, though, we are going to get to Finch. How do they fall? Stay subscribed. You're going to see that stuff popping up on your feed. Is there anything else yeah. though, Will, that's coming out soon that you're like, all right, we can't forget about this? Oh, I'm sure there is. Um, I was a simple yeah, man. What was that? I was a simple I was man. A simple is man. That, is that the Sundance one? Yeah, did that come it's out? coming out soon. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I want to see I'd, it Sundance. I'd, yeah. I saw it and I didn't love it, but I did. I do remember being like, I feel like you should watch it. I, yeah, I, I don't know if it's going to be your thing, but I think you might like it. Yeah, I wanted to check it out. I didn't. I didn't know if it was already out or mm -hmm. if it was coming out, but um, yeah, I'll, I'll be down to check it out. The uh, my, one, oh. one of my most anticipated of the entire year is coming out soon. Drive my car. Which oh yeah. I'm I'm checking my email every every day on info about this movie. I'm I I'm gonna be front row. Like I I, I can't wait to see it. Yeah, that's a three-hour one though, so you gotta. gotta oh, I'm ready. Some time, yeah. It could be six hours. Uh, well, you. Car to go see. Sure, it. it's um, it's coming out pretty soon, or if it came out already, uh, Seven Prisoners, I know, is one you really liked. Um, yeah, good movie. Good on movie. Netflix. I think. Um, yeah, that's yeah, it's on Netflix right now. Prayers for the Stolen is coming out soon. I got a review. Uh, oh, yeah. One other thing, uh, if you are curious about Encanto, I can plug that now. My review is coming soon for the Spool, but I did talk about it on my YouTube channel, John and Theory. You can check that out. And and Kanto, I saw it a week ago, Will, and it's a really good Disney movie. I'm not gonna lie to you. Is it good? Yeah, I mean, it seems like it's the good. response isn't like super high yet, but I imagine I might change once the reviews come out. I, you know, uh, reviews started. The embargo lifted this morning. Okay. And it's mostly positive. I won't tell you the Rotten Tomato score because we have our of little course. game we love to play. Yeah. Huh? 
But um, yeah, it's, it's almost, it's overwhelmingly positive. I don't think people are like, okay, this is the best ever, but there are a lot of A minuses, fours out of five, stuff like that. I'm pretty high on the film as well. I think, I think it's really, really strong, a strong movie. And if you're curious about what I like specifically about the movie, I don't do any spoilers, right? I, I didn't, I didn't say like, okay, here's what happens. I, did, I didn't do a big plot synopsis, but I did get into what I think separates this movie from other Disney movies in ways that like, I've been a little tired of seeing from Disney movies. So you can check that all out on YouTube and, and do all that stuff. So yeah. House yeah. of Gucci is the other one I wanted to mention. We're going to be yep. talking about soon. I'm seeing and, that uh, in the hour. All right. Well, yeah. <laughs> until then, we'll, we'll get to that and so much more later in the show. But for now, we're going to sign off. So from the Internet, California, I'm John Agroni. And for Internet, Pennsylvania, I'm Washington. See you next time.